Hello friends, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this video. My name is Steven and I'm a fourth year dental student and I passed my INBDE on my first try. In this video, I'm gonna be diving into my entire INBDE experience, going from the studying process all the way through getting my results and giving you my overall thoughts on this exam. I hope there's a lot for you to learn in this video because this exam can be pretty daunting and scary for the fourth year dental student, but hopefully with some of the things that I talk about in this video, you're able to exit this with a plan of action and you too will be successful on your first attempt at the INBDE. This video was made possible by the wonderful people over at bootcamp.com. As I will describe in this video, INBDE bootcamp was the reason I passed my board exam. Bootcamp offers a prep course which covers every topic your exam will cover with mental dental videos, organized cheat sheets, a massive 2,500 plus question bank of questions with answer explanations, and so much more. Ari, Bootcamp's founder, has placed a 100% pass guarantee on this course. And I agree with him. If you use Bootcamp the right way, I guarantee you will pass your INBDE. Use the promo code Stephen Ray for 10% off your Bootcamp upgrade, which will get you full access to everything Bootcamp has to offer. Thanks again to Bootcamp.com and let's get into the video. So I wanna dive right into this video because there's a lot to cover on this topic. But the first thing that I wanted to quickly reference is that I will be making a short video on YouTube to explain how to get set up and scheduled for your INBDE. This is a bit of a process that was slightly confusing to me. And so I wanted to make sure that all of you had a quick resource to look at that'll take you step by step through signing up and getting your exam scheduled. What is this test? It's a test that all of us are going to take in order to become dentists. We take it in our fourth year at my school. Some schools do it differently, but usually it's going to be your dental school that's gonna help you decide when to actually take the exam. And the INBDE is actually a new form of the written board exam. It used to be done in two parts. One was after your second year and the other was in your fourth year. Now they've integrated everything in together and made it more case-based. And so this is the exam that we get to take in order to basically start the process of becoming licensed as a dentist. The exam is a two day exam exam and it covers 500 questions. So that's kind of some of the basic information about the exam there. But I really wanna focus in on this next section, which is how I actually studied for my board. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video was made possible by bootcamp.com, but my freaking board exam was made possible by bootcamp.com because they were the only resource that I used for my studying. And that scared me a bit because there were people online that were saying they used multiple different resources and that that kind of strategy covered everything better. But I just went with Bootcamp because they hadn't failed me in the past. I used them for my DAT and I was quite successful there as well. So I figured that I would be fine if I just used Bootcamp for my board. And I was right about that. But the first thing I wanna talk about in this section is the study schedule. Now, Ari, the founder of DA2 Bootcamp, who I actually did a podcast interview with, which you can listen to right here, Ari created a study schedule for all of us to use, and that goes through the entire list of INBDE Bootcamp, all of the topics, all of the things that we have to know, and if you follow that schedule, it will get you through the study process in about a month and a half. Now, I personally chose at the beginning to not use the study guide, and that was just because I felt that what was probably gonna happen for me during my board was that I would know certain things off the bat really well from just my dental school courses and other things I would have to kind of discover that I didn't know as well. And so the way that I decided to tackle the studying was just simply to start answering all of the study questions that are built into bootcamp. So I kind of didn't even really create a study schedule for myself. I started roughly six weeks out, but at those six weeks out, like at the beginning, I was just doing like maybe 10 questions a day just doing like one of the daily warmups that's available here in bootcamp. Six weeks out, I really wasn't focused very much on the exam. I remember my classmates and I all starting to study and people started asking like, oh, are you studying yet? Oh, you're, you're doing like hundred questions a day. Wow. Like, but then in that next couple of weeks, as I got closer to my exam, I started to kind of ramp things up. My most serious studying was the last two weeks. Honestly, that's that was the time when I got that kind of fear of the exam was legitimately looming. And I really put the time in and 
just like spent a lot of time every day doing it. But we also, at least at my school, we had clinic going on, we had coursework, we had all sorts of stuff that was happening while we were studying for the board. We didn't have like time off of school just to study. So I was having to integrate it into my day, which was a little bit difficult. So as I said, the way that I studied was I just went through the boot camp study questions. There are a ton of them. There's like over 2000, probably over 2500. And they're exactly the type of questions that you're going to receive on your actual board exam, which is really, really helpful. Uh, some of them are identical and we'll get into this, but at least if they're not identical, they're very similar to the types of questions that you'll get, which is great because you've been looking at these questions for weeks. So when you actually get on your board, you're familiar with the question styles. And as I said earlier, what I thought would happen was that I would know certain topics and not know others. And that's exactly the way it was. There were certain things that I was very familiar with just from my coursework and from being in the clinic. A lot of the dentistry stuff like uh, fixed and operative, those things I just kind of knew because we're doing them every day in the clinic. But things like research, for example, and even anatomy of the head and neck, those things, like I had a lot of work to do just to get to baseline with them. And so what I did to cover that was I went through the mental dental videos that are all built into bootcamp.com. And those videos are incredible. They're very, very helpful. All of the doctors that contribute to the, this course are just top notch. And what I loved about the mental dental videos for the board prep was that they were very kind of bare bones, but that was a good thing. The INBDE covers an absolute boatload of content. There's so much information that you theoretically could be asked about. And so having these videos just kind of give you high yield information was very, very helpful. And I remember that mostly like in farm because he would give you the mechanism of action and go through a couple of things that you might be asked about. And that was it. When I took my pharmacology course in dental school, we went into just a ton of information, all sorts of possible side effects. Like, whereas this one was more so just like breaking it down to the high yield things and I appreciated that. And the other thing that I did to supplement my studying in areas that I didn't really feel super comfortable with was I went through the cheat sheets that are built into boot camp. And these are kind of a gold mine that I didn't discover until a little bit later in my studying. But the cheat sheets, once again, break down all the high yield information for each topic into like one PDF format page and it is absolutely awesome. So I would go through all of those and I would actually create Anki decks for the various subjects and just rep through the Anki decks in addition to doing the questions on bootcamp. I did this mostly with pharmacology because pharmacology doesn't always come naturally to me and there's a lot of drugs that you have to learn. So I just went through the cheat sheets and made questions, made Anki cards for each possible little topic and just went through those. Now, while studying and doing the study questions, I always had at my side a large piece of paper and a Sharpie to kind of jot down all the scratch work that I needed to jot down. And the reason I did it this way is because on your actual board exam, you're gonna be given a laminated piece of paper and a Sharpie marker to do your scratch work with. So this is kind of how I was able to go through and just like give myself that extra space to work with, especially for like the research section. I had to learn how to do all these math problems, which the math is quite simple, but you have to learn formulas for each thing. So that was one thing that I did during studying. And then in terms of study locations, I basically studied whenever I had a minute. So if I was at the clinic at school and I had a little bit of time, I would pull up bootcamp.com on my iPhone. That website works perfectly with your phone. You don't even need an app. So I would go through study questions just like at clinic and I'd be with my friends and we'd ask each other questions and see if we knew the answers and stuff. And then also, of course, I spent a lot of time here at the desk uh, with bootcamp on my computer and also my iPad. Just it works really anywhere that you want. There is an app uh, for your iPad. So I've downloaded that as well. I would say it's an entirely necessary just because the website works perfectly as well. But the app is a little bit more sleek, I guess. And so you can choose that option if you have an iPad. Now, the last major thing that I wanted to talk about with my studying and sort of back to like my study schedule was that bootcamp actually has a full simulation exam built in. And this is something that I loved about bootcamp. It has a full 500 question simulation exam that you can go through. So my last week before the test, I gave myself two days to go through these questions, these 500 questions, and I also reviewed them as well. And that was just super helpful because it gave me an idea how the timing would work out on the exam, which was once again, very helpful and very accurate as well. Bootcamp was just awesome. It gave me everything that I needed on this exam in terms of studying. I loved the ability to rank my questions, kind of like you would do in Anki, 
with red, yellow, or green. The first time I would go through questions, I would often miss them. And so those would go into my red category. And then just through time, I would review. And so what you see now with my bootcamp is that there's no red questions anymore, meaning everything that I missed, I went back and at least got it to a place where it was yellow or like, this is something that I'm learning. And that's something I would recommend. If you can get all these boxes to green, Ari says you'll actually pass 100%. There's a pass guarantee with bootcamp.com. And I think that's totally reasonable. I mean, you can see here, all of my uh, sliders here with my questions are either yellow or green. I didn't even take the time to make them all green and I still passed. So I think the pass guarantee is actually legitimate. That's really what I wanted to say in terms of studying. Now let's get on to actually taking the exam and we'll start with day one. So test day one, I scheduled my INBDE exam at a testing center back in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I'm from, that's my hometown. So I wanted to go back home during my winter break D4, you know, fall into spring. That was where I was gonna take it. That was when I was gonna take it. So I, I scheduled it in Nashville at the very beginning of my winter break. I wanted to get it finished so that I can enjoy my break. We had like two weeks. So I was like, let me just get it done in those first two days and then I can enjoy my break. Um, and I scheduled it at a testing center there. It was the same testing center where I took my DAT. And test day one starts at 8 a.m. So I got to my testing center at about 7.25, 7.30. Ended up sitting in my car until like 7.45 almost 750 when they open the doors. Basically, they open the doors to all of the people who are coming in and taking various exams and they check you in. They give you a locker key and you're basically allowed to put all of your personal belongings in a locker. My locker was not big enough to fit a backpack, just like a water bottle and a couple of random odds and ends like my phone and keys and wallet and everything. And then basically you just carry your ID for the INBDE. You're supposed to have two forms of ID. So I had the two forms of ID in my hand, my locker key, and then all of my pockets were completely empty. In terms of what I wore, just kept it really comfortable. I wore a sweatshirt, sweatpants, you know, t-shirt and, and then tennis shoes. I would recommend wearing something like that, male or female, just because the testing centers can get pretty chilly in there. So you wanna have some sort of kind of something to wear on top that will keep you warm in the case that you get in there and you're freezing cold. And every time you enter the actual testing room, they're gonna check your pockets and your sleeves. And so you're gonna have to actually turn your pockets inside out and show them that you don't have anything on your person. And once again, you're not allowed to bring anything in there. Those are things you just kind of know about like the logistics of getting to the testing center. The attendants there will give you a couple of things to use on your exam. They gave me a calculator, as which I didn't think that we were supposed to get a calculator on this exam. That was not what I saw on the internet. It was funny because I was super excited about that because I'm not good at math and then I didn't use it at all. <laughs> I literally didn't use it. But then they also give you those two Sharpie markers and two laminated sheets. This is the same thing that you had on your DAT. So think back to that. We all did it. So that's kind of the same format of what you're gonna get. And then you walk into the testing center, you sit at a desk with a computer and they give you some headphone earmuff things that you can kind of cover your ears with, which I used. Um, and then it's just you and the computer. So day one of the INBDE is three sections of 100 questions followed by one section of 60 questions. So that's 360 questions total, which is a lot. It's very taxing. And you kind of go through those in chunks. The actual exam itself and navigating through it is very similar to what bootcamp shows you when you're practicing. So that's very helpful as well. You're able to skip questions, flag them, go back to things. And for me personally, if I don't know something, I'll flag it and then just come back to it at the end. So I would speed through all of the questions, all of the 100 in that section, and I'd flag, you know, 25 or however many it was. And then at the end, I would go back and just check through all those questions and give myself more time to think about them. And that's what I did for every section. It's just how I personally like to take these exams. Some people just go straight through and just answer all of them. That's what I like to do. And one big thing to talk about here is that timing was not an issue for me. Honestly, they give you a ton of time for each of these sections. I don't think anybody should have too much of a problem with timing. It just like, really isn't a problem. You have a lot of time. The least amount of time that I had left after a section was 14 minutes, meaning the longest section that I had, I still had 14 minutes left to work with if I wanted to, and I, I didn't. I just ended the section there. And then in between each section, you have optional breaks. Some of them are 15 minutes, I think, and then one of them's 30 minutes. So you can use those if you'd like, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. In my personal opinion, this exam is long and physically grueling because you're sitting at a desk for just so long. 
uh, you're thinking really detailed for a long time. And so I would recommend using your brakes, get up, move around, walk around. I actually went out in the parking lot a few times and did a couple little quick jogs just to get my blood flowing because I, I hate sitting at a desk for like many hours at a time. I don't like that. I used my brakes um, and I would recommend you do it as well. I also ate a small lunch on my first day just because that was a longer day. So I had like a sandwich and an apple or something. I would recommend doing stuff like that, but it's totally up to you. Day one is physically demanding and I thought it was the harder of the two days in my personal opinion, just question wise. That's pretty much all I can say about the first day. So day two is once again, starting at 8 a.m. and it's 70 and 70. 70 case-based questions, 70 case-based questions. Case-based questions are kind of the whole point of the new format of the INBDE. And basically you have like two to five questions on a case. They'll give you all of this patient information and you have to go through and answer random questions about various things in the case. Biggest thing with these is read every single word on the entire screen. Sometimes they'll ask you questions about something that's very specific that you have to go in and find in the patient history or something. I would just recommend reading them because a lot of times you'll think, oh, they're asking about this, when in reality, they're asking about something a lot more specific. One of the major features of bootcamp is that it gives you case-based questions that are exactly like the ones you're gonna get on the board. So spend time with those on bootcamp, make sure you understand what you're doing when you're going through and answering these questions and you'll be fine. I thought day two was easier, it's a lot shorter. I actually left the testing center at 11.20, so I was out of there really early. Easier day, there were certain case-based questions that I thought were not fair and weren't very well worded, but I thought overall it was an easier day in general. All right, for the results and my reaction, it took me almost two weeks, like on the day, on the dot, to get my results of this exam back. And that included Christmas and New Year's. So two weeks and I got my results in an email. It just said I passed the exam and I was absolutely ecstatic. I really didn't wanna take this thing twice just cause it is a lot to go through. It's expensive, you have to sign up and it's not cheap. It's a lot to go through with studying and it is physically demanding and just like mentally exhausting to take the actual exam. So I was super excited to get my results. I got them while I was at school with all of my classmates and a bunch of us that took the exam on the same days. We all got it, our results at the same time. So Lane and I, for example, we opened our results at the same time and gave each other a big hug. And we were just like, let's go, it was super exciting. I saw everybody like around the lab, just hugging each other and it was, it was awesome. And then that night we actually went out and had beers to celebrate, we went to pint night. So really rewarding to get this exam behind me. And I'm super excited that I passed it on the first try, like I said. So I really honestly have boot camp to thank for that. All right, and finally, I wanted to give you just a little section of my overall general advice before we wrap this video up. Like I said, the biggest thing with this test is that there's a ton of information, an absolute boatload. So just don't pressure yourself to learn everything because I don't even know if that's possible. There's too many little nooks and crannies of all this information for you to learn. But the big thing that you'll get when you go through these 2,500 plus questions on bootcamp.com is that you actually are going to see what the high yield stuff is and you're gonna focus in and learn that high yield stuff and you're gonna see it on your exam, I promise you that. There's other things that are not as high yield and some of that stuff you'll learn, some of it you won't. You don't have to learn it all. You don't have to get a 100 on this exam to pass. We don't know exactly what the percentage is, but it's certainly not a 100. So don't force yourself to kind of try to learn everything. You're gonna stress yourself out way more than you need to be. Just go through this and I promise, if you learn the questions, you learn the answers and why things are the way they are and why answer options are not correct, you will be fine on this exam and I will include myself in the 100% pass guarantee that they have over there at bootcamp.com. Take this test and get it behind you. It is one of the major steps that we have in becoming licensed to become dentists. I mean, getting it checked off is just a great feeling as I described earlier. Major, major thanks to bootcamp.com. Y'all have saved me twice now. You did it for my DAT and you've done it again for my INBDE. I wouldn't be able to become a dentist without you. And I'm just so thankful to Ari, to John, to Joel, to all the people that that I've worked with in my years at boot camp. It's been fun making this video. It's been fun working with you guys to create this content. And once again, I personally benefited so much from all of the content that you guys put into this thing. If you have any questions about the INBDE and there's anything that I didn't answer in this video, please let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, there's a lot to cover and I may have missed things. So just let me know if I didn't fill in any of the blanks for you. But as always guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope it was informative for you. I hope that you too are able to go into your exam and pass it on the first try. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you so much for watching. And as I always say at the end of my videos, I will see you in the next one.